when you push through and realize how strong you are, you're also going to discover who your real friends are, who really loved you and who you really love. Because when things get rough, that's when your real friends and family are in Dubai and everybody else exits. And thirdly, you build an immunity to future challenges. You literally develop a pattern of being able to deal with anything because it's almost like your muscles have gotten stronger. Your mental, emotional, spiritual muscles have gotten stronger. And so we want to make this happen. And by the way, most people think a world without problems will make them happy. In fact, I've seen studies. I'm wondering what you guess. In North America, I don't know what it is in every country, but I just saw the study recently. In North America, they asked people two questions, U.S. and Canada. They said, what is the greatest thing that could ever happen in your life? That was the first question. What do you think the number one answer was? The greatest thing that could happen in their life? I thought they'd say fall in love with the ideal person or something like that. No. Number one, winning the lottery. Winning the lottery. And ideally $100 million or more, right? And when they asked them number two, what is the most horrible thing? What would be the most disastrous thing? What would be the scariest thing? What would be the worst thing that could ever happen to you? I mean, a lot of answers, but the number one answer was 60% plus people gave the answer. Becoming a quadriplegic. Those are pretty extreme differences. Win the lottery, become a quadriplegic. So here's my question. Because you're dealing with things in your life right now that I'm sure are stressful. It's just part of life, right? So here's my question. Which one of these people do you think is happier three years after the experience? After they win the lottery or after they become a quadriplegic, which one... But put in the chat box, which one do you think is happier three years later? Jot it down real quick for me, if you would. Put it down there so I can see it in the chat box. <coughs> Go ahead. There you go. Okay, good, good, good. Now, almost all of you are saying the quadriplegic, and you're wrong. I trapped you. It's the obvious answer here, right? No, it's not the quadriplegic. But it's not the person that won the lottery either. Do you know what happens within three years? We have an emotional immune system. Within three years, if the person who has a quadriplegic is not put on drugs, that's the exception, the bottom line is they're both as happy as they were before it happened because the quadriplegic now is excited about being able to move their finger. Like, there's awe, it's excitement, it's amazing. And the person made all this money and thought it was gonna make them free. Now they're dealing with people trying to take their money, family members that are demanding it, the IRS is coming after it, people are trying to manipulate them and they eventually get back to where they were. So I want you to know, whatever you're dealing with, I hear you, I feel you, but you can solve it. The first thing is not to have the delusion that problems are gonna go away. Here's the goal, get a better quality of problem, right? Apple computers try to you know, deal with a problem, they're going bankrupt. And then they came up with iTunes and the iPod, and it was so successful, it created a new problem. They're, they didn't have enough of them, and people were mad. Distributors are mad. So then they went to China and made them faster and cheaper, and then people were mad because they scratched, and they got a $100 million lawsuit against them. But that was a quality problem for a business that now is doing $2 billion in music sales. What my life is focused on is helping people really to experience what I consider to be an extraordinary life, which would be life on your terms, not mine. So for some people, you know, that's three beautiful children. For someone else, it's building a billion dollar business. For someone else, it's writing beautiful poetry. And then what we want to do is uncover what is it that's preventing you from having life that way now and, and make the shifts in whatever that is. Sometimes it's a lack of strategy, right? You're just not sure how. But more often, it's, there's a psychological component. There's the fear of failure. There's the sense of uncertainty, like I don't know where to start, so I don't start. There's so many elements that are there. And when people go through Date With Destiny, what they're really doing, they're not going there to just deal with trauma. But I pick those people specifically because I want to find some extreme examples. And there are plenty of other examples because if you see a stream example, you go, man, if they could turn that around, I can do this. I used to do a seminar called You Have No Problems. And I would bring in literally a dozen people that were blinded, that lost arms or legs, uh, you know, all their family were, was murdered. But I picked them because these people were truly happy. And I would use this extreme example because then by the end of the conversation, by the end of the night, you're going, I have no problems, <laughs> right? I mean, if these people can be happy, there's no excuse for me. So in the event, we walk you through to figure out what is it that's controlling every thought, every feeling, every emotion of your life, literally. And what's controlling it are your beliefs, your values, and your rules. And most of, them did, most of us didn't consciously create those. So what we really do here is we show you how to decide what's great so you don't throw out what's already great and what needs to be improved. And then we wire that into our bodies so that if you can imagine, most people want things that are in conflict. They want to make a billion dollars and sleep till noon. <laughs> 
they want to make everybody happy and they want to tell the truth. Those things don't always go together really well, right? So what we really do is show people how to align themselves so they're pulled towards what they want instead of how to push so hard. You wear out when you try to push yourself. No matter how much willpower you have, there's only so much, even if you have a lot. And so you want to make it so it's not willpower. When you're pulled to do something, it gives you energy. When you push to do something, you expend energy and you kind of burn out. So that's what we do. But David Dustin, we just use this as an example because it was intimate, but many people come to Unleash the Power Within. That's the, that most people go to. It's really you know inexpensive by comparison. You can go there for you know, like $595 and you get a special or something on it, uh, depending on where you're sitting in the room. But it's, it's four days of total immersion. And again, we have people from every walk of life. The events are usually eight to 10,000 people. And, uh, and I'll invite you. I decided I'm gonna invite the people that took the time to come in and work so hard to, to, to ask a question. So you stay on the line too, and I'll invite you to come as my guest to the one that we're doing coming up. Where, um, where'd you say you are based again? I'm sorry? Upstate New York. Upstate New York, great. Well, you'd have to fly to the other side if you wanna go soon to, you know, to California, but I think it'd be worth it to you. Would you like to come? Sure, absolutely. Thank you very much. Done. Speak to Tyler here, give him your details, and I'll make sure that we get you an invitation sent to you. Great, thank you. Nice meeting you. You too. God bless. We have another question here. Hold okay. on one. Come oh, here, buddy. Sure, sure. <laughs> From here she comes. Hi, family. Hello, everyone. Sage. We have a, another question from okay. Michelle Fried Riegler. You have an amazing ability, Tony, to transform how individuals see and feel themselves. We are at a time in our world that transforming what we think of ourselves is nice. How do we transform beliefs that people have about others? Beliefs people. Okay, so now you're trying to do God's work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So it's, people are going to believe what they're going to believe. I mean, this, this show is a perfect example of this. Um, Joe Berlinger was saying, you know, he said, Tony, there's three audiences here. He said, there's your fans. And he said, frankly, I could put a black screen up with your voice and they think it's a great film. And he said, and then there's the haters, you know, and like Taylor Swift says, the haters are going to hate, you know, someone who doesn't know who you are, doesn't have an experience and doesn't really want to know. Uh, who might be threatened by it. He said, you're not going to change those people's opinions. And he goes, you know, I'm not either. He said, but the people in the middle, people like me that were skeptical, but not closed people that, you know, really want to prove their life still. He said, that's the vast majority of people around the world. And that's who this is really for. So in my case, I even know I'm not going to change somebody's view. And I've got a lot of influential skills, but I would say to you is they're trying to change what people feel or believe about someone. It's to really work on you. You know, if you, if you go to, you know, get on an airplane and the first thing that happens is they say to you for emergency procedures, if there's a problem and we lose oxygen, right? What do they say? These things are going to pop down and they have oxygen. And the first thing you're supposed to do is put that oxygen mask on your child, right? Wrong. <laughs> they say you're supposed to put on yourself first and then your child. Now, why is that? It's simply because if I, it sounds selfish to take care of myself first, but if I go try to put this on my kid and I don't have the air, I'm going to die and my kid's going to die too. So I think we've got to make sure that we work on us, that we master us. If you can change your feeling where you're not judging other people so much, if you can find places in your own life where you're fearful about what people think and you can learn to let it go, now you can help somebody else do that because you're an example of it. But trying to tell someone verbally how to do that when you haven't done it, it never works because you just don't have the skill. And if you don't have the skill, how are you going to expect to transfer that to somebody else? Yeah, are you and I, are we responsible to do something about this since we have this awareness and yeah. understanding? Yes. Or should we just f*** it over and yes. just go, well, yes. it's over and there's nothing can be done? No, that's okay. one thing I really, really want to do something about. I know that. So I, that's why I'm staying with you on this. Because there are about 20 other things I need to do, and it's changing the time frame, but I think this is too important. I think this is more important than what we're going to do in some ways. I know it's more important for them. And I know that if you don't do this, you won't be able to live with yourself. Which is already how you felt, because you've known this even though you couldn't word it this way. At some level you've known this, have you not? And you yes, felt guilty yes. about it, I assume? Yes. Yeah. Now, can I just tell you something? I've been very intense here and you know that I'm not harsh with you, but I've also been intense in terms of putting this on your shoulders. But I have to remind you that I love that you are willing to do something about this and you're so committed and you will. This was all part of a stage that was important for everybody. And you're never going to know why. And you don't have to. Your son's gift from all of this is he's in touch with the sensitivities of life. 
And because of that, the feminine side of him is well developed. If all we do now is get the masculine side well developed, he'll be the best man he could possibly be. Because the truth is we want to develop both parts of all of us, don't we? That makes us more whole people. We just want to make sure when both parts are developed, we live primarily in our essence and we have access to the other. If I was just masculine, you wouldn't be listening to me. And most of the people here, most of the women here certainly would not listen to me. But they've seen that there's all this femininity as well. There's a feminine energy, there's a caring, there's a sensitivity in me that's gigantic. And there's a masculine part that's gigantic. Since both are so developed, I can go back and forth for whatever needs it. But what guides me is this sense of mission, which is a masculine force. And there's a discipline and a focus to it. So we wanted to have both. So can I just remind you that you gave him beautiful gifts? Is you've given him a sensitivity most men will never have. And every woman wants a man who is masculine but is also feminine. They want to be with a man who cares and has a sensitivity of a woman also. But is strong enough to be their man. So you've given him a gift that most men don't have. So I think I have to honor you for that. And your daughter has some strength she wouldn't have if you weren't her mother. So please take in what you have succeeded at. Mm -hmm. There you go. Because you can only build on success. Getting better isn't a hack or a trick or a one change that you need to make. Getting better is a campaign. It's a campaign. It's a daily, a weekly, it's an hourly fight. An incessant fight that doesn't stop against weakness and against temptation and against laziness. It's a campaign of discipline. It's a campaign of hard work and dedication. It's waking up early and going to bed late and grinding out every second in between. Every single day. So, you want to get better? You want to self-improve? Stop looking for a shortcut. Rule four, compare yourself to who you were yesterday and not to who someone else is today. Yeah, because if you're comparing yourself to someone else, I mean, first of all, you don't know very much about the life of the person you're comparing yourself to, you don't know it, it, you know it across all of its dimensions. I'm gonna get right into the first rule, which is leader, lead thyself. So leadership is not just for CEOs, leadership is not just for prime ministers and presidents, and people with large bank accounts and massive offices. Leadership is not only an opportunity, but the responsibility of every man, woman, and child on the planet today. And I can compete with these guys. I have the complexion of rejection. 14 years, I silenced myself. Wow. And so I regret that because there are some people that maybe if they'd heard my voice, they would not have turned to drugs. If they'd heard my voice, their lives would have taken a different direction. And I can't get those 14 years back. That haunts me and maybe, I think that drives me when I speak with such energy. I'm, I'm trying to make up for that time, mm. but I can't. Yeah, and if, if jiu-jitsu is not your thing, whatever the f your thing is, just go and do it. Just force yourself to do it. And if you feel like sh because you ate lunch, then your lunch was you know filled with bullshit. Well, then, hey dummy, don't eat sh lunch tomorrow. Tomorrow, try a nice salad. Yeah. You know, try a salad with some salmon and see how you feel then. You're like, hey, I feel way better today at six o'clock. Duh. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. your decision making will be better. Like people don't understand how significant it is. Like all these little decisions, they those are like the that's the path for the rest of your existence on Earth. And if you decide to go to Cheetos chocolate chip cookie route, <laughs> you're, you're you're just making a sh path. You're carving your path through broken rocks and glass and it's not the way to go. Yeah.